It was a landmark day for millions of workers with the minimum wage gaining a 5.2% boost from Ryan Gosling, Ryan Gosling to the minimum wage. <laughs> Quite the transition. And while for many it is good news, small business owners who have battled the pandemic, staff shortages and now inflation are feeling even more pressure. Joining us now from Canberra is Andrew McKellar from the Australian Chamber of Commerce and the Australian Council of Trade Union Secretary Sally McManus. Good morning, guys. Sally, let's start with you. Good news for workers? Yeah, look, uh, low-paid workers need and deserve this pay increase. It's still a real wage cut um, for people, but it's keep them, keeping them close to the cost of living. We all know that everything's gone up, especially for low-paid workers' rent, as well as got groceries and fuel and, and energy costs. And so this is really needed to keep people's heads above water. Everything costs so much at the moment. Is $40 a week really going to have an impact, do you reckon? Look, I mean, if you're on um, $40,000 a year, which minimum wage workers are, $40 a week is, is, uh, it makes a big difference uh, in terms of being able to you know, cover your bills. Uh, for people above that, they'll get around a 4.6% uh, pay increase. So it's going to like ease the stress on people. It's still going to be a really difficult time for all working people, mm. but it just means they're not going to suffer as much as they might have. Do you feel at all um, for small businesses, Sally, um, who have got to come up with the dough and um, eventually they're going to have to uh, pass that, uh, that increased pressure onto customers? Listen, I totally understand that a lot of small business owners will be thinking, oh, another thing that's going up. But I just say to them, just look outside and all your customers, like your customers who receive this pay increase will have money to spend in your business. If they don't receive that pay increase, that's less consumer confidence, less spending in your business. So whilst you're um, having to pay that for your workers, mm. so is everyone else. And so what comes around circulates. Andrew, what do you say to that? Well, good morning. Uh, look, uh, we, we would say this, this is a risky decision. Uh, of course, uh, many people are looking out for a pay rise uh, at this time. Uh, but uh, as I think you mentioned, uh, it's not just the cost of living that's going up. It is the cost of doing business. And at the end of the day, this decision will add $7.9 billion of cost back into the bottom line uh, for many businesses. So for many small, small businesses, uh, you know, they're struggling with uh, you know, higher prices at the moment. Uh, they're struggling to maintain supplies. Uh, input costs are going up. Uh, we're seeing energy prices going through the roof at the moment. Mm. Uh, so, look, this is another cost. And uh, at a time when we're trying to, you know, struggle against inflation, uh, it's not the best thing for the economy. It might add to it. Um, I, I would say this. I, I don't feel sorry for the bigger companies. Uh, and I don't think anyone does. Um, but it is the small business owner... Um, that, that has to come up with these extra costs. Uh, is it true um, that, that some of them uh, are just not going to make it through or, or is that a beat up? Look, absolutely, Carl. I mean, uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head. We have a two-speed economy. So in some sectors, uh, mining and resources, we're seeing commodity prices uh, uh, going through the roof at the moment. Uh, they're doing reasonably well. They're making good profits. Yeah. But for small business, and let's not forget, you know, 98% of all businesses are small businesses. Uh, that, that is uh, where there's a much greater struggle. And you just have to walk down the main street in any town, go into the CBDs, uh, and you'll see that many of them are trying to keep their doors open at this time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that many people are putting, um, you know, their house uh, under a mortgage uh, to invest in their business. So... Uh, we, we can't see those costs uh, going up uh, uh, much further. Sally, the increase won't come into effect for hospitality, tourism and aviation sectors until October. So it's not helping anyone in the short term. Yeah, look, that is a problem, especially if you look at aviation at the moment. The only people who would receive this increase are the cleaners and the baggage handlers. And it's really hard to fill those positions at the moment. And those workers really need the pay increase. The main thing I hear actually from, from businesses, including small businesses in particular, is being able to keep staff. Like the skill yeah. shortage mm. is a huge issue. And most of them have already put up their wages by more than the 5%. And they're not going to be affected by this. This is the absolute floor. So for anyone who's not put up their wages, yes, they're going to need to, but I think most businesses out there have had no choice but to increase their wages to keep people. Andrew, it, it's hard to see how this wouldn't have flow-on effects um, to the other um, levels, right, of, of paying. Um, I can't see how even beyond um, uh, these levels, it's not going to increase for other parts. Uh, would you agree with that? Oh, look, absolutely, again, I mean, this is not an increase uh, that just goes to the 180,000 or so uh, 
uh, lowest uh, paid workers, the, the, the ones that are on the minimum wage. Uh, it cascades through the award system. Uh, it will end up uh, flowing through to 2.6 million uh, workers uh, quite uh, quite quickly. Now, uh, I mean, the, the, the issue with that is it's really one size fits all. And I think that that's where we have a problem. It's not tailored to the particular circumstances that individual businesses are going to be facing. Difficult times. I appreciate both your perspectives this morning. Thank you. And let's know what you think at home.